Hey everyone, I'm doing Twitch here from these two minutes of content small. Gear a 1 vs 1 Akron replay. So basically it's a um, meta time strategy game, or one could say it's a... Uh, you could think of it as a, um, a bit of a real time strategy game except with time travel involved. So as you can see this bottom thingy here is the... Uh, actually, I'm going to check the resolution. Oh, the visual resolution should be right, but anyway. <laughs> this bottom part here represents the timeline. These uh, things here basically are waves that propagate changes from one moment to the next, and this red line represents Sam, um, the red player, which is going to be... Guess, oh, damn, we should check. Oh, there we go, it's going to be Sarko's. And, uh, yeah, the blue line represents, um... What the hell his name is? Huh, change that, actually. Okay, let's see. Ah. Uh, Okay, numbers. So it's going to be numbers as blue versus uh, Sarko's as red. Huh, interesting. And yeah, as you can see, um, well actually no, I suppose probably wouldn't be too familiar with it, but anyway. <laughs> numbers, um, actually was it numbers? Yes, numbers is going to be playing as the Agrikim, while uh, Sarko's is going to be playing as the uh, Terrans, or the humans. Pretty sure there's a... yeah, so playing as the Terrans there. So yeah, as you can see we've had, um, Okay, we do have a battle occurring right here, so this is uh, one minute into the future. So yeah, one minute into the future, this um, spe special operations guy is going to be attacking this thing, whatever the hell it is. Oops. Yeah, I've actually played the game a bit. I tried to get some multiplayer games going, but um, yeah, which I couldn't get anything quite yet. Although then again, I haven't played, yet, played the game that much actually since it's had its um, alpha released. So. And an early release as well. But anyway, it looks like this building is actually going to get destroyed roughly one and a half minutes into the future. And yeah, right now we're seeing the game from uh, Numbers perspective. So it's actually jumping um, back just to before one minute into the future. And yeah, it's going to be moving his um, building, whatever the hell that is. Um, I think it's a time, that's what it's called. Oh, there we go. It's actually what the Arcticus, which is um, useful to command, I'm pretty sure. But anyway. And uh, yeah, as you can see, he's reproducing various units um, using the uh, Sepi, Faro, and Octo, or Faro, sorry, and Octo, and uh, yeah, managed to counteract that attack, but of course now we have a different attack by um, Sarko's just attacking around there, doing a bit of damage. Let me just check to see. So it looks like, um, yeah, Numbers is looking one and a half minutes into the future, while uh, that Sarko's guy is um, looking only one minute into the future. It looks like I'm actually seeing a bit of damage around that time point as well. So, uh, here we go. It looks like um, Numbers is now going to be seeing just what's going on there. Okay, so he saw that that's actually um, the result of well, a special operations guy attacking. And we also got um, Numbers just jumping a bit through time and all that. He's going to want to send a couple of troops to try to defend further back in the past. But yeah, we've also got um, the uh, Lancer, which is just, yeah, the attack aircraft coming in, should, should be able to counteract them, yeah, just about, there we go, perfect, so should be just fine. So there we go, counterattacking him, but at the same time though, we do have uh, Psychos further back in time, I just see the game from his end actually. There we go, so Psychos is um going, at uh, this present basically, so now he's actually going one half, where he was one half, half a minute into the present, uh, into the past, now he's going um, roughly 40 seconds into the future now, one minute in the future. I think he's just um, coordinating attack. At, yeah, he's basically coordinating attack on um, numbers as best as he can. And yeah, by the way, these are resource um, extractors, and these are the resources that they're extracting. One of them's minerals, the other one is um, Q plasma. So basically, it's like minerals and gas, sort of like StarCraft. But anyway, a bit of a twist, as you can see. And uh, yeah, as you can see, these uh, resource processes are being attacked by this Lancer. Let's just see if we can get um, numbers response. Look, looks like he's gone about half a minute into the present, uh, into the past. Sorry, sending a couple of units back though. And yeah, I think that's just yeah. There we go. Just to counteract the um, Lancer being sent. In fact, it looks like okay. It looks like. Um, at present, or at least at this time, which is actually almost at the present. Um, and there we go, there is re these resources, the processes actually haven't arrived until um, basically until the present. And uh, yeah, as you can see, this the sun indicate, top bit here indicates um, minutes before and after the present. And uh, yeah, this bottom part here actually indicates the minutes that have elapsed 
uh, during the game itself. So this is four minutes in the game right now, which is one minute in the past, so before the presence occurs. So there we go, we do have um, numbers counteracting that uh, Lancer with a uh, fancy Pharaoh. Just seeing if anything else is being attacked. Nope, looks like that's going to be it for the time being. Also going to be deploying a Spire, which means he'll be able to build his own uh, air units as well. But lo and behold, we do have another Lancer coming in from uh, Sarkoz. Looks like Sarkoz is actually playing further back in the past. I think he's just looking to cause as much damage as possible with his Lancer. Though it's possible he might be planning a different attack as well. So we'll just uh, go back to his um, viewpoint here. Well, talk about jumping back and forth through time. Unfortunately, we can't actually independently see these um, points of time ourselves. We have to see it from the player's perspective. But really, I mean, it's quite something to actually see such a battle series of battles unfolding at different time points from different uh, player perspectives as well, to say the least. God damn. So yeah, it looks like um, about 20 seconds before the present, um, <laughs> Psychos is going to be continuing his attack and now is actually going to be jumping forward because he's going to be noticing... Uh, okay, because he actually did have a bit of damage um, just before the present, let's have a look. Okay, what does he have here? He does have a lance attacking, not really causing much damage. Now Psychos is going straight into the present. Okay, just to see. God damn, it is pr a bit hard to actually commentate on this. I actually saw this replay before, a bit of a while ago actually, and um, even after seeing it beforehand, it's pretty hard to actually track what's happening because there's two players, as you can see, are just jumping um, back and forth between different points. It looks like um, quite a bit of action was actually concentrating around um, Numbers base, although, what do you know, we actually do have Numbers counter-attacking uh, a couple of... Uh, 20 seconds before, but they, there we go, he actually has retreated his um, sepipod. Oh, by the way, these units can actually combine to produce some more advanced units like these, but anyway. Um, yeah, he has actually retreated and, god damn, now the circus guy is again going back in time. I think he's trying to. S well, okay. I think he's trying to. Um, yeah, there we go. He's uh, maneuvering his um, lancer that he had set up previously. Although I don't really know if that's actually a, a technically accurate term. But anyway. <laughs> oh god, good stuff indeed. But anyway, um, yeah, he's maneuvering his lancers through out the uh, expansion pod and the ba and the uh, main base of. Um, Numbers and yeah, it looks like his answers are going to get destroyed. It doesn't look like I actually managed to do that much damage. I think it looks like the damage is mostly being limited. Hard to tell that now. Numbers is now wow, wow. <laughs> I just have to see what numbers is doing. Doesn't seem to be doing too much. He is a bit further ahead um, in time. And it looks like a bit of damage is being caused. Um, this blue part indicates some um, damage dealt. I think yes. It, Indicates damage dealt and um, it indicates that damage um, being uh, taken from the other player. So, that... God damn, it's only hard to keep track of. But anyway, um, <laughs> we'll okay. We'll just keep the camera around here. Okay. So, it looks like numbers is now. Um, he did send. Damn it! I should have paid attention to actually. Um, what point of the timeline? Okay, there we go. He. Uh, he sent his unit, I think, around the seven minute mark. I'm not entirely sure though, damn it. His players certainly like to jump around quite a bit. Um, I'm pre pretty sure actually seeing some relatively experienced players actually playing this game, because um, if you're just a newbie playing this game, chances are you're not going to be jumping through the timeline like this and coordinating attacks at different points, not to mention cancelling attacks, and so on and so forth. Um, so we can actually have numbers little fancy flying vehicle being destroyed. They have um, Psychos now going backwards through time. I think he's just um, yeah, trying to make sure that he's got the correct um, troop composition so that um, he can you know defend his little expansion from any sort of attacking forces like these... Uh, oh no, these are actually just resource... well, that's turned into resource processes now. Interesting. Ah, god damn, what a game indeed. So yeah, hopefully with a bit more um, experience actually playing the game now that it's been released for a bit of time, hopefully show more people playing. I actually, might try it online at some point, and um, yeah, more experience actually playing the game and uh, commentating. We should be able to. Um, oh, okay, Ferropods. Now we've got what appears to be stealth bombers attacking um, 
the base of Sarko. He looks like he's gone, I think, a bit further back in time. Yeah, I think this would indicate the um, time when the, uh, he got attacked by those bomber units. And I don't quite see what actually he's doing from his end. I kind of wish we could see, um, like we had like a production thing. Kind of like a Starcraft, but oh well. Oh, there we go, we got deploying Lancer. There we go, so he's got his Lancers, um... Where the hell are his Lancers, actually? In either case, he is, um... Okay, he's got ATCHs as well. Actually, can these guys detect cloaked units, I wonder? Come on, show me the damn tooltip for me, bastard. I'm pretty sure... Actually, can these Lancers detect cloaked units? That'll be the question. Damn it, well, I know that it's... Um... Sarkos did, did get detection in some form, so in any case, he did get detection and uh, took out those stealth bombers to make sure that the attack on his base didn't actually succeed a couple of minutes in the past, and um, yeah, it looks like now he's just busy fending off an attack, but it looks like numbers is further back in the past, and we are starting to see more damage being dealt. So just look at his perspective now, see what... Oops, did I just switch it again? Yeah, actually, yeah, there we go, yeah. So we're going to be seeing it from numbers perspective. Okay, he is um, trying to harass um, Psychos' base a bit more. However, yeah, we do have um, Psychos reacting to that by sending his own troops forward at an earlier point in time to make sure that he doesn't lose any of his important factories and uh, other buildings and such. That's pretty important. Huh. Oh, that's right. Of course, Terrans, they require importers in order to create reserve units, which is basically sort of like a supply... Um, so like a supply unit, um, uh, well, measurement of supply, but anyway. Okay, so these aren't just stealth bombers, they're actually um, just general stealth fighters, which are pretty weak if attacked um, at all, actually. And speaking of which, I do have a couple more um, vehicles being produced. Lancer, just getting the hell out of there. So yeah, I'd say Psychos does appear to be in quite a bit of trouble. As you can see, these are blue bars certainly indicating quite a bit of damage being dealt by numbers. As you can see, he's expending quite a bit of chrono energy, which is um, basically some um, resource that is expended when you order troops to move around and all that in the past. So, but the back you are, the more uh, resources it takes. So um, you can set up command hierarchies and all that to reduce the amount of chrono energy being used. And um, as you can see, he's really using the hell out of it, managing to inflict quite a bit of damage on Psychosis base. And uh, they say that, yeah, he's maneuvering. Um, in general, has been quite quite exemplary, if I do say so, and it's just been um, ridiculously hard to actually keep track of what the hell's actually been going on. So yeah, certainly not your standard um, real-time strategy game, but um, yeah, it's actually in a class of its own now. <laughs> it's been done, but anyway, but yeah, certainly quite a game indeed. And yeah, I apologise if my commentary is not quite as um, precise or analytical as my um, other commentaries, but yeah, it really is just one hell of a game to keep track of, uh, especially between players who are pretty um, advanced. Speaking of which, we do have numbers actually taking out Psychosis' base here, Psychosis unfortunately being able to um, react in the proper manner. It looks like um, Psychosis, makes it, apart from the initial um, early harassment, um, numbers pretty much managed to um, put Psychosis on the defensive um, through different points in the timeline. And uh, yeah, it looks like he's just been um, trying to do quite a bit of damage. Although, wait a minute, if we jump... Whoa, okay. That's interesting. It, it looks like um, the timeline's changed yet again, because um, in this particular timeline, Psychosis base is actually remaining. Oh my... <laughs> Talk about keeping track of that, eh? God damn. God damn indeed. Alright, um... I uh, probably should have seen the game from Psychosis perspective there, because I, I'm pretty sure he would have gone back in time to yeah, inflict a bit of damage upon his opponents and um, to try to prevent... Um, God damn, to try to prevent um, his base being destroyed. It appears he has been successful, numbers um, being just a couple of minutes... well, 2 minutes 40 seconds roughly in the past now, and wow, Sarkoz has actually managed to reverse the destruction of his base entirely, so I don't know, maybe he's actually been saving up some resources or something like that, or maybe not saving them, well, saving up his chrono energy basically, so he could order his troops as um, far back as possible to try to counteract a numbers attack on his um, expansion, but it's kind of hard to tell, but in either case, well, now numbers is jumping, f f well, s f Five minutes, forty seconds back in time. He actually had a pretty sizable um, 
amount of troops being um, built up in the southeastern portion of the map there. And uh, by the way, this area here indicates this bit with white lines, sort of crisscrossing. Um, I don't know if they like to show up in the replay. Should hopefully. Um, that basically indicates um, the fact that there shouldn't be enough current energy to uh, order units around. I'm pretty sure, at least with what the numbers is currently selected. But uh, wow. So yeah, Psychosis actually managed to counteract um, the attack, but at the same time though, we do have um, a few expansions actually by um, numbers here expanding at different points. He's still jumping around, and as you can see, he has managed to counteract um, the damage being done by Psychosis. In fact, he's actually been doing a bit of um, harassment, destroying the... Um, I think you're pretty sure, yeah, he managed to destroy, destroy the resource processes with his uh, cloaked... Pharaoh pod and uh, yeah, kind of should all just that far in the past either, so what the hell. Whoa, and now he's just jumping back even further. I'm not entirely sure why, I think he's just trying to see um what exactly happened in the far past, because he just doesn't have enough chrono energy to actually do anything. There we go, finally actually jumping slightly ahead now, just three minutes behind, and there we go, he had jumping to when he actually has his um Octoligos 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 um up and running, so they seem to be, um, yeah, seem to just be functioning as an assault unit, and as you can see, now they're going to have a hell of a time taking out Ferris's, uh, oh, sorry, Psychosis base. Might just switch to actually his perspective now. Since he's probably going to be jumping all over the timeline, he's sustaining massive amounts of damage, as you can see. A bit of damage being, built, being dealt today, but um, given how far back in the timeline uh, we are, I don't actually know if he can actually stop this attack from uh, succeeding, but you never know, he might actually decide to counterattack, but at the moment, we're seeing the, the game from his perspective, he is around the same um, point in time, or he's observing the same point in time that Numbers is. In fact, um, fast forwarding, it seems, yes, he's fast forwarding, and uh, yeah, his um, expansion base has been entirely destroyed. He's, he's got a single turret defending, but I don't think he's going to be able to do that much damage. These um, salt units just coming in. I think Numbers is also jumping a little bit further back as well. He seems to be, um, I think we're seeing um, yeah, him influencing the timeline as well even then. So yeah, he's just going to be destroying Psychosis base now. Psychosis, in my opinion, he should have tried to maybe put up some more hidden expansions and all that. Not to mention he should have um, tried to scout out his enemy's hidden expansions. And uh, yeah, just really, he was basically forced on the defensive. He actually did manage to build a chronoporter, but I don't even actually see him chronoporting much back into the past. past although it could have been um, mistaken. He might have actually um, chronoported, but basically I mean, sending in his back in the past. Um, to counteract the attack on his initial expansion here, although it's kind of hard to tell because I didn't actually see it from there. And, uh, <laughs> not bad. So I actually did trigger a paradox and actually I missed that, so. There you go. One hell of a game indeed. So, you can, yeah, you can see the um, game from either player's perspective, although you can actually see it from um, the main observer, well, it calls the main observer, which is basically just the presence as well, but. Really, you're going to see the presence shifting by a ridiculous amount. Although it should, would have been interesting actually to see different permutations of the timeline um, coming to pass, but whatever. <laughs> did a hell of a job commentating in the case if I do say so. So yes, we should be able to upload this game later on today, along with the Dawn of War Source Storm videos as well. And until that happens, this has been uh, Damien Tudovich, signing off.